Yer. Ha. This is Starboy Nathan. And that's how we stunt in. Jump a couple racks in the party like it's nothing. Yeah. Because I'm going to have a hangover. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to have a hangover. Yeah. Ha. You watch her in Factory 78. Like that. Just keep it locked right here. You already know what's popping, man. Starboy Nathan. Yer. Yeah. Welcome to the factory. Factory 78. With DJ Larry. You know the deal. TV. I'm your host, Adi Chopin. We're here in London in a secret location to speak to the one they call Starboy Nathan. I like to refer to him as Nathan. How you doing, bro? I'm good, man. How you doing, man? Not bad at all. We've just seen you perform with the boy Novo, mm -hmm. stunting. That's one of the new stuff. But before we get into that, a lot of our fans, you know, a lot of your fans mm -hmm. now, they know Nathan from like seven, eight years ago, yes. man. Come into my room with the first thing, you know, do without my love, round and round. Listen, at the time when you started, especially with those type of songs, we had the American Invasion with the Ushers, you know, all these kind of guys were coming up from America, taking over the space here in the UK. And lucky, little did we know that we had someone like Nathan popped up with a couple of tracks, really gave them a run for their money. What was life like for you at that time and how did that whole vibe start off? It was great, man. That, that, like Back in the day, that was like 2004 when I first started making music professionally. I just wanted to make R&B music. I was just, I was influenced by R. Kelly, Michael Jackson, and just like Marvin Gaye, Music Soul Child. So I just wanted to make some music and I was just coming into it as a fresh young boy. I was just making music, coming to my room was just a white label, do you know what I'm saying? So it was just me making songs that I wanted to hear, do you know what I'm saying? And just, just, yeah, just writing songs and that. Like the first song, the first two songs I ever wrote were on my, my first album, so. Do you know what I mean? It was it was a great process. Well, that was good. The funny thing is, one of the channels that really, really supported you at the time that I used to watch you on was Channel U. Like, you came back from work or whatever it was at around 6 p.m. in the evening, summertime, coming to my room was playing. The video was shot out of town, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. We shot half of it in London and half of it in Portugal as well. So, yeah, that was that was a wicked experience, man. So, yeah, I, I had some good times then. With MFG, it's the big homie Nathan. Yeah! Then, of course, you know, everybody expected next level to come out. All of a sudden, there was a little bit of a, like, a quiet spot for a while. You know, if the people like myself that followed you yeah, yeah. knew you went out of town, you were rocking in the States. Tell me about that, that experience. You just want to dance. Wow, 
what happened was that there was a couple things obviously my album was released independently so since i've been out like all of my career i've been independent and when i first came out it was just me making songs and what i wanted to do i just wanted to kind of grow more as an artist that's like that's why as i said it was just a white label nathan like you know what i'm saying just just making some songs and what i wanted to do was kind of perfect the craft and learn how to be a better songwriter and just learn about the industry i'd spent some time in america i worked with like swiss beats and stuff like that wrote some songs for some other people as well and just kind of grew as an artist so now like i kind of know where i want to be as an artist and it's that's really why i'm here where i am today do you know what i'm saying and kind of like implemented like the star boy nathan as well like because it's always been there it's just i i didn't know how to embrace it. i didn't know how to get it out i didn't know how to be an artist i just knew how to write songs and and i just wanted to know that like the whole package get everything together artistry because a lot of people say to me yo your songs are heavy but i don't hear them enough do you know what I'm saying? Like they're not mainstream. They're like I don't I don't hear mainstream radio playing them because this is before everyone like this is before the explosion of urban music in the UK. So like there was no end dubs and striders and tiny tempers and any of them. Do you know what I'm saying? It was just me, Estelle, Lamar, Jamelia. That was fundamental. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's like it was it was everyone was like struggling to break through and get that mainstream radio play whereas now it's more breakthrough like people have done it do you know what i'm saying so it was from a different time it was from a different era so i kind of used that to just kind of build myself as an artist and now that obviously the scenes bust open because of what you know tiny temper and end dubs and obviously estelle to a certain extent myself back in the day as well jay sean like because of these artists that have been out for eight nine ten years have helped to break it down do you know what i'm saying now we can just release music so now i'm 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 ready to just be like you know what i'm supposed to be the funny thing is um a couple of years ago whilst you know it was a little bit of a quiet period in the mainstream i i like i said i was following you a bit and then this song popped up on the internet i think it was 2009 i'm not too sure superwoman i had that on replay 24 7. i love that track how come you never put it out like officially you know why because i was just feeling it out to be honest like obviously i'm an r&b guy and i just made a nice it's just a nice r&b song it's gonna be on my new album it's gonna be on the new album so like it's it's one of the ones that i was really in love with at the time man and um i remember it was just i was just in america and i recorded it and i was like let me just put this out to see what everyone's saying do you know what i'm saying and they got a good reaction as well so yeah it's gonna be on the album so you can listen to that that's on my new album 3d so you can you can hear that soon 3d a lot of people that especially when when we have uk arts or international acts that try to break america or go to america for certain you know certain things most of the time when they come back it, it, it becomes a, they, they're lost in the middle in a way you know they don't really make things happen anymore yeah. you know unfortunately one of my biggest you know the artists that I love and I'm still waiting to hear some new stuff from Craig David it's, it's one of those people that's been stuck in that you know box a little bit but you've come back now you know years after the first album mm -hmm. you've dropped Diamonds you've dropped Hangover you know you work with Flowrider and you're getting such you know massive response from this you know this upcoming album tell me about how it feels for you man it's it's great i tell you what as well the one thing that was really um meant a lot to me that last year 2011 was actually my most successful year you know what i'm saying i had the, my highest chart position ever like i got my song into the top 20 independently do you know what i'm saying and that's like and that was a big achievement because i've as i said i've always been independent and all the songs that people love like come into my room do without my love and all these songs these songs never went into the top 20 do you know what i'm saying so for me to come back last year, build up, have the song with Flo Ride, as you said, I've had tunes with Rick Ross and everything like that. And now to come back, do my own thing, get Diamonds into the top 20, then have a song with Wretch as well, which was dope. Do you know what I'm saying? Now all of those songs are going on this album, going on tour. I'm on tour with JLS at the moment, which is massive as well. Played the O2 Arena like, I played the O2 Arena like six times in the last year and it's all been sold out with JLS like it's, it's been mad so this has been like the most successful per period of my career and it's like to still be growing after being in it for eight years and I still know that there's so much more that I have to achieve like it's great because a lot of people just go Tsh, and then they can just go you know what I'm saying me I've just been going like that you know what I'm saying and and 
a, a lot of people sometimes they don't even see that because they don't know but you know like when you're working hard in certain channels that people don't even know that you're in yet you know what i'm saying so hopefully it will just all come to fruition and people will just be like raw he actually has been grafting for long now, the funny thing about what you're talking about now, we went to Scotland, I think it was like a couple of months ago, ABC in Scotland, Glasgow, and there was a big, there was a little advert for like Boys to Men, and there was a massive poster for Starboy Nathan, and I'm thinking in Glasgow, January 2012, that shows how much work you're putting in in the UK and around as well. Definitely, that's what I'm saying, we've been doing, a, I've been doing a lot of touring. I tell you what, this, this is a funny fact, um, I came back from America when I was doing my songwriting and stuff. Like I did like a little apprenticeship with, with Swiss Peace and stuff. It was amazing. So I came back now, 2010, um, after after I put out Superwoman and stuff, and I had like a thousand followers on Twitter. Yeah. Now I got 60,000 followers on Twitter in just like over a year, in it. And and it's like it just shows the growth. Do you know what I mean? And as I said, I've just been going hard. I've just been going on the touring, just going all around the UK, just kind of familiarising people that never even heard of me before, that with the with with who I am, with what I've done. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's been it's been great, man. So it's a pleasure to see you now. 3D is the it's the album that's coming up. We've had diamonds on that sick video, sick tune. Go check that out. Hangover, my favorite. Not only is the song incredible but the video was also super super dope as well thank so, you man brilliant stuff so 3d do you have a specific date when the album is coming out in may 3d is coming out on may the 13th is 3d actually stands for determination dedication and desire one time i was in an interview right and this guy asked me oh i first saw your tunes in like 2004 and it's like 2011 now you know what i'm saying and it's like wow you're actually coming back and diamonds just went like just charted and stuff like that like what kept you going like how are you how are you still actually you know what i'm saying that goes it's the 3d man determination dedication and desire man I'm, I'm dedicated to what i do i'm determined to do it because i feel like i haven't although i might have achievements i don't feel like i've achieved anything do you know what i'm saying i feel like there's too much more to achieve you know what i'm saying and and just that desire to do it man so yeah. well you started off fantastically well 2011 i think incredible for you this is 2012 the album's coming out may the third of may you said 13th may the 13th of may 3d go get that album star boy we're looking forward to more singles you're here performing with your boy noble stunting on his own v that's his own song as well definitely no nah, stunting is a hard tune man i, I say my they can't bring that shit. I love performing this, man. It's like when we was in the studio vibing it out, it came out real easy. Like they played me the beat. I wrote the hook in like five minutes, to be honest. Like it was just like it was just fun. It was just it, we were just in the studio, just all gassed and that, and yeah, it was just fun. So I like performing it. No was cool as well. Shout out Scorcher as well, man. Like he did a sick verse on this as well. So it's just it's just all love, man. Follow me on Twitter before I forget at Starboy Nathan. You already know I'm on that Twitter right now, real heavy, and that Facebook. Like my Facebook page. StarboyNathan.com and all of that stuff as well. Gotta get a shameless plug in there, you know what I'm saying? Before you go, the Afrobeat vibe is kicking up, blowing up in the UK. Nathan, you're a musician, you write, you perform, you do everything. You think it's something you're gonna rock with pretty soon? Estella's done it. Yeah, 100%. It's 100% on the cards because my, um, my new single, it's a double A side. One's called Who Am I and the other one's called Cosmic Kiss. The producer that produced Cosmic Kiss is a guy called P2J from Free Minds, yeah? He's he's Nigerian. He produces Afro beats and that and he's sick. Like, he produces for like, you know, he's got bare tunes that you might, like, do your research in it. Like, Pro 2J, like, what, check him out. You already know who he is. I know you lot know who he is because he's banging. So yeah, it's definitely gonna happen. That. Like, and even Cosmic Kiss, my new single, has that little, it's, a, it's got a tribal feel in it. And that's on purpose, trust me. So it's like, yeah, yeah, it, it, you'll see. Soon come, it soon come. And after the album comes, after 3D comes out, yeah, I'm doing a mixtape. And the mixtape's going to be the mixtape. I can't wait. Like, I can't wait. We can't wait. 3D comes out 13th of May. Starboy Nathan on Twitter. Follow him, like his page. We're looking forward to the album. Blessed, bro. Thanks for having us, man. Thank you, man. Respect, man. Hangover. Uh -huh. Retro, but.